and welcome back to Hillside Power Sport Repair, where today we attempt to figure out this new microphone and figure out how to put tires on this ATC 7D. As you can see, I let the boy use the cordless impact a little bit. Anybody with any safety stuff? I'm not listening. Anyways, he really likes the cordless impact, and we are using it to its fullest extent to pull these two-piece rims apart and get the little o-ring out of them and we are going to get these tires off but it is not without a fight these things are stuck like a big dog i ended up using the manual tire change today the manual tire changer from harbor freight and as it turns out with this new microphone if i don't continue to make noise in it the whole time things get real weird that being said, these things were on here like a big dog, real stuck. I got half of it off with manual tire changer and then tried real hard to use the old coach tire changer and that didn't work. So we ended up back at the manual tire changer where I fought and fought and figured out I have to put the other half back underneath it in order to get this bead broke loose. And I'm guessing these beads have been on there since 1985 when the machine was manufactured. Steve to get them off of there. My son was real relieved, very excited, and we immediately took the rims over, cut the valve stem out, and poured them in a bucket of water that had maybe a quarter of that container of muriatic acid in it, and let her do some work here. I did take the opportunity to go ahead and pull the hubs off while he went in the house and enjoyed some air conditioning. Everything came apart pretty good, except for the rims. We threw everything else back in it, and we're going to do some checking on that. As you can see, my little helper's boots are there in the uh, picture. Shortly after this, he outgrew them. But we did go ahead and check on it, and it is doing some work at this time, eating the rust. And uh, pretty excited about how the acid's coming along. going to get these wheels painted up in the brand new tires that we've had for almost a year installed on this machine at least on one of them enough i broke a glove so now i have acid on my hand because i am real cool like that these spacers slash axle protectors these tubes them and the hubs came clean real fast they didn't have hardly any rust on them but they did have some sort of a plating that the acid immediately attacked and killed them with some gloss smoke gray rust-oleum and left them to dry. Use a lot of Rust-Oleum products. Really like that stuff. Attacked the hub here. This hub interfaces with the sprocket assembly. And as usual, one small thing snowballed in. Pretty soon, we we're pulling a whole bunch of crap apart. So we uh, we got the covers off both sides. One side in this picture, but soon to be both sides. And. Everything is surprisingly clean, speaking that I don't think this machine has been maintenanced since it was bought new in 1985. In fact, the oil that came out of the engine, I'm positive, has bits of real dinosaur in it. The axle itself looks straight and true, and that's a really good thing. Attached something similar to a hitch, and we got that off. And now we can see just how nasty this chain is. A little side note before I get to it so you're prepared. The chain tensioner bolts in that are just ignorantly tight, really tight, like diesel truck tight. I'm not sure how they didn't strip out the bolts. Maybe they weren't that tight when they put them on, and the fact that this had probably never been moved in its entire life, but they were definitely that tight now. I had knocked out the master link here and attempted to drive this chain apart, which was about as much fun as what it looks like. Yep, getting her apart. Mm-hmm. Any minute now, this is going to come apart. Turned out vice grips were the thing to get this thing started. Uh, I know a chain breaker would have been a little bit more better in this situation, but I'm not sure where mine is. So, on and on we go. Got this stuff apart. The rubber inserts look pretty dang good. Underneath everything looks pretty dang good, considering that it's, again, from 1985, which makes it as old as I am. And we attempted to clean all of the mud out of this uh, drive cushioner there. 
it worked about like expected, pretty much didn't. Rims are getting better. To those of you who said, why don't you throw that drive hub in the acid wash there? Well, muriatic acid softens and kills aluminum, and it didn't seem like a real good idea. So we went ahead and pulled the various pieces of hardware I had dumped in there in my infinite wisdom. And they all had some sort of coating on them, which was eaten very quickly. And as usual with acid, before I was able to neutralize it, because I'm ADD as all hell, they flash rusted and had to be washed again. That part not shown on camera. I was, however, pretty impressed with the way the paint came off. thought that was really cool. For those of you wondering as to why I sound a little agitated here, well, it's like my third or fourth time recording the audio on this with the new microphone, and if I don't talk a lot and keep this microphone going, for some reason it creates really weird dead spaces. I don't know why, it just does. Now keep in mind also, as you see me blowing the paint off, if I had a larger compressor than the one we use here at the shop, or our little shop, this would do better, however, our pressure falls pretty drastically when I'm using this. I managed to paint and let dry these rims without taking any footage at all of it, which I consider to be a win for me, because I did manage to get footage of me messing with them directly afterwards. Two rings for the center of this rim, and I thought, I'll use a tube. Don't use a tube in this application. I'll show you why. The tube up. We got the wheels bolted together. They're not super tight. They are finger tight-ish. Didn't want to damage the paint at this point. And in order to have both hands free for me to help manipulate the tire, we screwed the Milwaukee air compressor to it and watched the magic happen. The problem here is that no matter how big that particular tube gets, it is not wide enough to fully seat these tires. On a little lawnmower or something, it'd probably be fine, but on my boy's machine, I'm just not going to let it happen. So, back to the old drawing board, as they say in the old cartoons. And we have a plan. It's not a great plan, but it is definitely a plan. We very carefully pulled the tires back off and screwed up some paint. We pulled half the rim out, and then went and got the O-ring and this fancy new blue sealant that I picked up from the local parts store. A large blue o-ring that wasn't previously a blue o-ring. I thought, maybe this really fancy aluminum 90 degree air fitting will work. It did not. And the place where the valve stem goes in was pretty buggered up, so we fixed that. Everything with some axle grease, because we're being serious about this, and pulled the new piece in. We're also going to put axle grease on the tire, because, again, we are serious about this, and kind of want it to go on first try. I haven't been sitting a whole, whole long time. I usually use dish soap, but I really just didn't want to screw with it anymore, and I wanted this to go on pretty easy. More skookum as we attempt to make sure everything is good and sealed and airtight as we can possibly get it, because in my infinite wisdom, I did not order new O-rings for these wheels. Probably could have printed the new O-rings, but instead, we're going to try this and see what happens. Take the Milwaukee hex impact and fasten these wheels together and do some sketchy stuff. That's right. Starter fluid and boom! That really did not work at all. In fact, I pretty much just managed to set the tire on fire. With the fresh paint on there, I was super excited about that because it was just dry enough to work with, but not dry enough for me to be comfortable with having an open flame on it. Now we're going to try this one more time. Mm-hmm. Rock back and forth. You can see how incredibly loose this is. We really have to stretch this tire. Now I will say that the fire did one thing. That that tire is getting hot and way more flexible than it used to was. Surely force the bead onto the rim on one side. Apply air pressure. And use my fingertips to pull the tire up until it magically seated itself. Hope and pray that the gods that we worship that somehow this works. Magically enough, it did. We got that thing on there. 
and we're going to be able to put this one wheel back on. And while we're doing it, I want to say thank you for watching. Feel free to use our affiliate links and tune in at some other time for another episode of me fighting a microphone. Thank you.